This is the second part to speech act particles. There isn't an audio to this, so I'll read it out loud. Quaning it sha and stracha. Quaning it quad san stracha. Quaning it quat san stracha. Quaning it quat cha san stracha. Quaning it quat cha san stracha. The sha particle is usually translated as obviously. When using this, the speaker indicates that the situation is clearly true and easily can be seen to be true by the addressee as well. The qua particle is very common in conversation. It is used when the speaker is giving information to the addressee. It usually has no special translation in English, so the second model could be translated to, here's some information for you, my friend Ram. The qua speech act particle is used in the same way as qua but it's used when the information is about a female person. The quat cha particle has been seen in the because video and also in the questions why video. So go ahead and review those if you need to. Quat cha is used when the speaker wants to address you to know that the event is the consequence of some previous mentioned event or a string of events. Generally, quat cha is used when the speaker wants to address you to know that the event is the consequence of some previously mentioned event or string of events. It can be translated into English with therefore, so then, or that's why. It is also translated as simply then. Some speakers sometimes use kwacha or kwacha rather than kwacha. All these have the same use. You most commonly hear kwacha in stories and especially after niche in the niche to construction. Um, this, for example, Nish Kwacha Suhiyas. So therefore he went. Just as with Kwa and Kwa, Kwacha has a feminine counterpart, Kwacha, which means the same thing but is sometimes used when the situation involves a female. Now we're going to go to combining speech act particles. And here's a model sentence. As the model shows, speech art particles can be used in combination. So look closely at the model. You can see the meaning of each of the particles in the English translation. This you makes it a yes or no question. This makes it a hypothetical, so then you would translate it as to would. Ya is our past tense. The t and the hi means you, and hi pluralizes you. So that's you folks. And then, kwacha for then. There are six particles in the model. Six is the maximum number of speech act particles possible in a simple sentence. There are restrictions on which speech act particles can be used together in a sentence. For example, you can't use both ya and sa, the past and future tense. There are restrictions on other speech act particles when they combine. For example, if the yes or no question maker is used, it must come before any others. We can think of positions of words in a sentence as slots. In Klalum, the first slot usually holds the main verb of intensifier. The second slot holds the speech act particles. The 31 speech act particles can be divided into six groups based on position and combination restrictions. These six groups form six position slots within the set of speech act particles. What this chart shows is that just as you can't use both ya and sa in a single slot, you can't use, for example, both ch and k, the, the hearsay in your hypothetical with both i and uch. You cannot use more than one particle for each slot. There are a few other restrictions on how speech act particles can combine. When ta is used with sin, the verb must have a prefix nu. For example, Nu hiat sin ta, I thought I went. The subject sin, t, and st, 
Cat be used with wo. Wench is used with qui, the subject sim, and st can't be used. There are several combinations that don't occur because they just make no sense. For example, chi with ta makes no sense. <laughs> now on to I know what to do. Ethan I nunsin. Ethan I nunsin. Tuk I nuns. Oh, tuk I nun ut. Shamu I nun. Shamu I nun. Quet I nun. Kakt I nunsin. Kakt I nunsin. Kakutung I nunsin. Kakutung I nunsin. Yet soothes I nunsin. Yet soothes I nunsin. This is an unusual particle, but the meaning is certainly clear to want to do or to be about to do something. The third model is translated as threatened to, but can be translated as it wants to rain. The meaning is consistent with the range of meanings found in the other speech act particles. What makes a particle unusual is that it's something like a suffix, something like a particle, and something like an independent word. Particles do not usually take stress. However, this particle does take stress as many suffixes do, but it doesn't take any stress away from the word it follows. When a suffix takes a stress, the stem vowel drops or is reduced to schwa. For example, you saw in the cause video that eatlin, eat, has a reduced vowel, a schwa, with a causative as athen east because the causative suffix is east and it takes the stress. As the model shows, the stem has stress and the eitnung has stress. Other than eitnung, only independent words or suffixes have stress and only independent words do not take stress from the word they follow. You catch that? If we consider this a suffix, then it's the only suffix that follows the passive and object suffixes. The last two models show it follows the passive and the U object suffixes. It would also be the only suffix to follow the transitive suffix other than the passive and object suffixes. The fourth model shows this. Aitnang is unlike any other independent word in that it can't, it can't stand alone. So something like Aitnangsin is ungrammatical by itself. Also, no other independent words come between a main verb and a subject and other speech act particles, as Aitnang can be seen to do in these models. As a particle, and like some suffixes, it can only follow a verb at the beginning of a sentence. You might think that something like skaha Aitnang would mean want a dog, but it doesn't make sense because skaha is a noun. A sentence like skaha Aitnang sin, I want a dog, would be okay with the ch have, since the ch have prefix makes a verb from a noun. Everything else in the Klalem grammar can be classified as word, particle, or suffix. But Aitnan has features of all three and cannot consistently be classified as one of these. Despite the difficulty of classification, Aitnan is easy to use, say, and understand. We can just consider it an odd speech act particle that takes stress. Note that it comes before all of the other speech act particles, including the question maker, as the second model shows. And the last quinawi. Ya aitnan ut. Ya aitnan ut. Ah, wa aitnan sin. Ah, wa aitnan sin. Quick, 